We saw the way that the devil works in history as well. One example that the elder gives is the alliance between Hitler and Stalin. Their common goal was the destruction of Poland. They wanted Poland, both of them. While both leaders decided to collaborate to devour Poland, Hitler turned against Stalin, which is characteristic of demonic behavior, right? Friend, yeah, I'll give you what you want, and then I'll turn against you. This is the primary duty of the demons, and this is the spirit they infuse into the leaders of the nations. The leaders of the nations have the spirit, the demonic spirit. They turn against those who they, they call at one time or another friends. You see this all going on all over the world right now. This is the primary duty, again, of the demons. The devil does not believe in these national alliances, of course, since they are temporary and necessary to prepare for the next holocaust, now the next mass destruction. That's its means to an end for him. You may be aware of a well-known antidote of the methodology of the devil. So the elders can give us something that I don't think exists in English. This is a Greek antidote of how the devil works. Listen carefully. It's a beautiful explanation of the methodology of the devil. According to this narrative, the devil uses his three favorite tools to tempt mankind. What is his three favorite tools? The needle, the blanket, and the bell. Right? The needle, the blanket, and the bell. With the needle, he whispers in your ear, go ahead, go ahead and do this or that action. Steal this item. Commit adultery with your coworker. Live a little. No one else will ever know. Besides, I have this thick, nice blanket over here. I can cover you with it. No one will ever know. You can embezzle for a few weeks. No one will ever know. Don't be afraid. Everyone is doing it. All right. These are the these are the kind of things that the enemy, the devil, says to the people, the young people, the old people, everybody. And the poor people, they fall into this trap. And they follow through with a sinful action, right? Adultery, embezzlement, whatever it is. And while still under the devil's blanket, the devil uses the sound of the bell to call out, come everyone, I found him under the blanket, go ahead and grab him, all right? So he gives the blanket, you think you have protection, you do the sin under the blanket, as it were, thinking it'll never come, and then he calls everybody to come and see it, and he destroys you. That's a way to understand how the devil works. He's not your friend, obviously. So this story explains the alliance of the beast, the ten kings, the prostitute, the methodology of the devil here at work. The beast forms an alliance with the ten kings to, to, to denude, to burn, to destroy the woman of harlotry, the prostitute Rome. The beast with the ten kings destroys Rome, who served and expedited the murderous agenda of Satan bar none. Right? So all whatever is Rome today, whatever is the Babylonian Empire today, it will be destroyed. It will be burned. It will be destroyed by the devil himself, by the beast and the ten kings, the ten kings. Moreover, another element here is that God allows a slide towards evil according to his secondary plan, his secondary will, not his first will, katevdokian in Greek, right? The good pleasure. But what he allows and then works within the free will of man in, in, in with his providence to bring about good, to bring about the end of evil, the punishment of evil, and the justification for the just. Evil in itself, being the absence of good, automatically includes the seed of self-destruction. There is evil, as you know, all of you who are paying attention for the last two years, a year and a half we've been doing this course, you know evil does not exist. In other words, it was not created. In other words, it's the absence of good, right? So it, it has no nothing in itself. It, it, it is the absence of good. It's the, it's the shadow. It's the, the, the absence of light. And so it it is it has no positive uh, existence, right? So it has no good, and it has self destruction already within it. All of all evil, which is again does not exist. It it has to be let's say taken on. So we talk about in the Lord's prayer the evil one delivers from the evil one. We don't say the evil. We don't say delivers from evil. Anybody who says delivers from evil has got the wrong translation. It doesn't exist in Greek. It's poniro. Boniro is evil one. We're talking about the devil. We're talking about Satan. So delivers from Satan. And so uh, evil in itself, being the absolute good, automatically includes the seed of social. In other words, he's already condemned. The evil one is already destroyed. 
It's just a matter of time. He knows. He knows his end is near. He knows where he's going. They say it in the in the Gospels, with the in the Gardenese, where he throws out the the uh, he frees the um, the possessed one in the tombs, and the the demons themselves say, "Don't before our time, don't destroy us." No, no, no. Send us to the pigs. They know, because they have nothing in themselves that is positive, right? So their destruction is is self evident and is coming, and so it's a kind of gross, utter despair that they work on, uh, uh, knowing their end and knowing their, the, where they're going to end up. In spite of it all, they refuse to repent, refuse to humble themselves. I'm still